Hello everyone. Today I am starting chapter electrochemistry and in this video I will be talking about electrochemistry, electric conduction, metallic conduction, ionic conduction and electrical conduction of solution and conductivity. Let's start. Electrochemistry. Electrochemistry is the area of chemistry which is concerned with interconversion of chemical energy and electrical energy. For example, you must have heard about dry cell. Dry cell is a device which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. And you must be familiar with the term with uh, term electrolysis electrolysis of solutions where electricity is conducted by ions electrolysis is breaking down of ionic compound by the passage of electricity and breaking down of electrolyte during electrolysis is a chemical reaction that takes place by the passage of electricity so electrical energy is converted into electricity chemical energy. So here I am talking about electrochemistry which is the area concerned with the interconversion of chemical and electric energy. It also deals with the resistance and conductance of the aqueous electrolytic solutions and the determination of conductivities of aqueous electrolytic uh, solutions provide an information on the extent of ionization of electrolysis in water. Now electric conduction. Before this let's recapitulate term electrochemical cell. Electrochemical cell where the redox reaction happens to generate electricity by the chemical reaction and these chemical reaction brought out by the means of electricity. All these cells we have learned in class 11 it is electrochemical cell. Electrochemistry used to deal with the design and operation of such cells also. Now the current research in electrochemistry is focused on the design of fuel cells and the fuel cells are being explored as convenient and compact source of electricity. So let's understand this with the term electrical electric conduction. Electric current represents the charge transfer. This is what we know that. A charge transfer or flow of electricity occurs through substances which are called as conductors and which do not allow are called insulators. There are two types of conductors. Number one is metallic conductors and number two is electrolytic conductors. Metallic conductors or metallic conduction we are going to learn here now. Electric conduction through metals involves the direct flow of electrons from one point to another. Here, in the outermost shell electrons of metals form conduction bond band and the electrons in conduction band are free to move. Hence, the flow under the influence of electric potential happens. So, metallic conductors are electronic conductors. Electrolytic or ionic conduction Electrolytic ionic conduction involves the conduction of electric current by the movement of ions in electrolytes. This type of conduction, the charge transfer occurs in the form of movement of ions through molten electrolytes or the aqueous solutions of electrolytes. Substances like salts, strong or weak acids are electrolytes strong or weak bases are also electrolytes. These compounds used to dissociate into ions when they are dissolved in water and the ions will conduct electricity. Conduction through electrolytic conductors involve the transfer of matter from one part of conductor to the another. This means that the current flowing through an electrolytic conductor is accompanied by chemical change. What all information provided by the measurement of conductivities of a solution? Let's see that. 
the conducting and non conducting nature of solution can be identified by the measurement of their conductivities like sucrose and urea or alcohol they do not dissociate into uh, ions in their aqueous solution their conductivities will remain nearly same so they are non electrolytes whereas substances like koh kcl naoh nacl hcl they used to dissociate into ions in aqueous solutions and the conductivities of their aqueous solutions is higher than that of water so they are electrolytes electrolytes conduct electricity in molten state or in aqueous state on the basis of high or low conductivity electrolytes are classified as strong and weak electrolytes the substance such as ionic salts strong acids or strong bases are completely ionized in aqueous solution and considered as strong electrolytes and they used to exhibit high conductivities whereas the weak acids or weak base are weak electrolytes they dissociate to ions in very small extent and they used to show lower conductivities than those of strong electrolytes that is why they are conduct uh, they are considered as weak electrolytes now electrical conduction of the solution according to ohm's law the electric resistance capital r of a conductor is equal to the electric potential difference v divided by electric current the relation between r v and i is equal to r equals to v upon i we know that the volt uh, the si unit of potential is volt current is ampere and the unit si unit of electrical resistance is ohm or we can say volt per ampere also the electrical conductance that is capital g of a solution is reciprocal of resistance that means capital g equals to 1 upon r the si unit of g or electrical conductance is siemens denoted by capital s and which is also equal to ohm inverse therefore we will write capital s or siemens equals to ohm inverse or ampere per volt or cobalt wo, uh, sorry coulomb per volt per second the unit of electricity related to the current strength in ampere and time in seconds is related as c equals to a multiplied by s the electrical resistance of conductor is proportional to the length and inversely proportional to the cross sectional area that means we can say here r is directly proportional to l upon a for after removing this proportional we will add one constant which is proportionality constant and that is rho which is called resistivity of conductor it is the resistance of conductor of unit length and unit cross sectional area now conductivity represented by k we have just now seen g is equal to 1 upon r and r is directly proportional to the length and inversely proportional to the cross sectional area so g is directly proportional to a and inversely proportional to l why because g is reciprocal to resistance the proportionality constant k is called conductivity here which is added after removal of this proportional sign so the conductivity or uh, is the electrical conductance of the conductor of unit length and unit area of cross section in other words the conductivity is the electrical conductance of the unit cube material and you can also say that conductivity of solution of electrolyte is called electrolytic conductivity i repeat for solution conductivity is called as electrolytic conductivity which is referred as electrical conductance of unit volume of a solution and after combining the equation we will get the value of k which is equal to g multiplied by l upon a 
which is also equals to 1 upon, 1 upon r multiplied by L upon A.